Hello YouTube, it is Nixie383 here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the best settings for Sony Vegas when uploading videos to YouTube. And I'm going to be showing you project and render settings uh, in this video. And for an example, I'm using a Battlefield 4 clip. This is going to be at 1920 by 1080, 59.970, which is basically 60 FPS progressive. So you can read that by clicking on a clip uh, and before you like even drag it in to your timeline or anything like that, you can read the videos, like the specifics on it right here to tell you all the information that you need to know uh, what the like video should be at for, you know, dimensions and all that stuff. Before we even get into the video project and render settings, there's something that I want to show you that's going to help your gameplay videos look a lot better. I think this is a good spot to show you it. This is, we got some stairs here, we got a gun. This is what I'm going to show you in every tutorial I use in Sony Vegas. Right click, switches, disable, resample. That's going to be one of the first things you're going to want to do when you're ever importing clips. Uh, before you even start editing. There's an even easier way to get all your clips in the timeline. If you have a bunch of clips, maybe they're all split up. There's one way to do it all. I'll get to that in a second. But just to give you an idea of what these disable resample is that is done by selecting the clip don't doesn't have to be anywhere uh, just select the clip anywhere on the timeline doesn't matter just as long as you know this clip is highlighted um, and then I'm just gonna undo it real quick because I already did it this is what it should be at by default let me see if I get a good spot real quick okay this is a perfect spot you can see some distortion all over it and it's kind of like uh, blurred out and it's just doesn't look very sharp so to fix that what I'm doing here is right clicking switches disable resample that is gonna help your clips look really sharp and really good I don't know why the default is set to smart resample but you just always want to set it to disable resample when you're dealing with the video game footage especially so that's one of my major tips that I'd like to give out in order to do this to all your clips in your timeline there's a really fast and easy way I've discovered to instead of individually doing it to every single clip and having to redo it over and over and over, there's an easy way to simply just get all these clips on your timeline together and disable the resample for all of them. I suggest doing this at the end after you've already added all the clips in the timeline so it's all really easy. I usually do it as soon as I import so I don't forget. but I think it might be even easier to just go through and have them all highlighted at once and just clicking this one simple button. To do this, I right click on the beginning clip and go to select events to end. This is going to highlight just the video clips all the way down your timeline all the way to the last one. What this does basically is highlighting just the video and not the audio allowing you to do whatever you want to all these clips the same. So in order to do the disable resample, instead of right clicking on just the clips, we're going to go up here and go to edit and go down to switches and disable resample. This will disable the resample on all the clips you have highlighted. YouTube has updated their video player to run at 60 FPS and they've had some adjustments over the time and they've released their own little suggestions on what your settings should be when you're uploading from uh, Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere or any type of program like that so you could kind of adapt to that if you're not using Sony Vegas with what I'm going to show you right now so to get started let's go right into the project settings uh, this is what I have set up and this is what I believe would be the best settings this is the only thing I'm still unsure of 8-bit versus 32-bit full range uh, that obviously over there you can notice a bit of contrast is just a slight difference and I, I think 32-bit is just a slight bit better than 8-bit. I'm not exactly sure what you're supposed to use. I'm not been able to find out what, what that would be used for. So everything you see here is what you're going to want. You're going to make sure that this is definitely going to be on non-progressive scan. Uh, this is going to be one square. You want that for sure. Uh, zero degrees original. 1920 by 1080. 60 FPS. Now these are the only things you're going to ever change if you're going to go in and put a different 
uh, set of footage in your timeline, you're going to need to adapt to these settings. So right now I'm using a Battlefield 4 clip. This is 1080p 60 FPS. So I have here 1080 is the height by 1920 is the width. So that creates this rectangle here and 1080 would be the 1080p. So if that's what your video clip is, you could check that by looking over here, then that's what your height should be and this should be your width. Uh, if your clip is 60 FPS, then you might as well put it at 60 FPS. This is close enough to 60 FPS, that is what it should be. It should basically come as close as you can to what this is down under your video. Um, but say you have a different clip, so I'm going to just back out of this for a second. Say we have a clip like, uh, I have some footage here from Destiny captured on PlayStation 3. And if I just, let me just click off that for a second. All right, so I have this highlighted here. This right here is going to show up down here. Like what the settings are or what this uh, this video was recorded at. So we have 1280 by 720. 60 FPS progressive. And that progressive is the P. So basically 720p, 60 FPS. So this game actually is not actually a 60 FPS video game. It is actually 30. For some reason, I might have accidentally recorded it in 60 or it just accidentally showed up as 60, but this is actually going to be a 30 FPS game, which would basically be 29, which is close enough. So if I'm say, let's, let's take out this Battlefield gameplay for a second and let's put in this Destiny gameplay I have. So if I have this here, and this is 720, 60 FPS is what it's telling me, but I know that this actually isn't 30, then the first thing I'm going to do is go to my project settings and change this to 720, and change this, the, the width, to 1280. So that is what it should be. And since this game is only 30, I'm going to change it to 30 FPS. And then everything else should be the same as, as you see down here. This is what your settings should be. And once you finish setting up these uh, for 720, uh, 30 FPS, 720, 60 FPS, 10, 1080, 30 FPS, 1080, 60, it all depends on what the footage is. Uh, you can go up here and type in, say, YouTube uh, HD 60 FPS uh, 720, I don't know, anything like that that has that information for you. Uh, if you want to make that a preset, then you can click this button here to save it as a template, and that will allow you to go down here and select whatever your custom made template uh, instead of having to go through all this work to change your settings all the time. There's actually one that will let you speed up this process to get you the 720. 30 FPS and that is this preset that's already in here if you look here we have HDV 720-30p that is the one that's going to get you your 720p and 30 FPS with all these great settings so that is one quick way to grab your 720p 30 FPS so I have a custom one down here called 1080 uh, 60 FPS so that's basically what I usually set as the default and I have to make any changes like if I'm using this Destiny gameplay then I'm going to go in here and change my project settings. So I usually click, click this button here once I am sure I got everything set up the way I want. Uh, this one is the 1080 60 FPS so I usually check mark this, click apply and OK. I already have everything the way I want it so I'm just going to back out of that. So now that we have this Destiny gameplay. Um, this is a 720p 30 FPS clip. So let me just do that for real real quick. I'm going to go in here and grab that 720p 30 FPS. Apply. OK. All right. Now that we can see that the project is set to 720p 30 FPS, that's what it's going to be playing at when you're playing it up in this preview box. Um, now we're going to be able to go up and let me show you the render settings. So I'm going to click this render as button. And this is what I have set up for my presets. As you can see here, there's a little equal sign, which is basically allowing you to be told that your settings and your project and what your video clips all are at match these render settings here. Now, if you're not using your presets and stuff, 
you'll be able to see all these equal signs that are telling you that you are equal to these exact render settings. So that's how you could start it off is by grabbing one of these, or maybe you don't want to use my settings. You could just go based off of this equal sign, and that's just one great way to help you out get the right settings. So now I'm going to go over here, customize template, just to show you what my settings are. I already know this is what I want, but let's just go through this real quick. Frame size, 720p, because this gameplay is 720p. Um, this is basically setting it to auto. If we go back real quick, I have one called auto. Basically what this is, is all my settings, but with these checked. So this just allows it to be a quick, easy way for if I click this and this and go to this preset, then whatever my video is going to be at is what it'll adapt my render settings to be. So that's a pretty cool little quick feature, but I usually like to do the manual way of going through and picking the right one, and that's easily highlighted by this equal sign next to it. So that's good to know. Um, so 720p is this gameplay. Your profile always want to be on high. Your frame rate for this video obviously is 29, which would be 30, uh, but there is no option here for 60. So what I usually do is I type in, uh, or, or actually let me just go to let's see what I do with this uh, 1080. All right, yeah, if you don't have this option, yeah, it's not even an option. So I have 59.94. That's all you really have to worry about typing in. The zeros are kind of pointless. Uh, but you could put in 60. It's not going to make much of a difference, but that is usually what it should be. So, yeah, this is uh, the 1080p settings. Uh, 1080p, profile is high. This should always be on none. This should be square, just like we had in the project settings. Reference frames, I believe, should be two. This doesn't have to be checked. Uh, this is an option to toggle between these two. This is constant bitrate, and this is variable bitrate. Now, this is what you usually want to go for with YouTube. There's actually even a specs page that gives you suggestions on what your bitrate should be. And this is what I believe is really good for an average bitrate. Uh, for maximum, 28 million and average 20 million now this is your maximum and this is your average this allows it to go around this average bitrate but also allow it to go up to 28 million you don't want this to pass do not have that checked uh this is going to depend on what your graphics card allows rendering using G cpu only is good rendering gpu if available is going to be better now that depends all about your graphics card and what it, if it works or not. Uh, one way to test that uh, would be to go over to system, and most people don't know what this is, but check GPU, and CUDA is available, is what this is telling me. So that means I could use this, but for some reason my graphics card just doesn't seem to want to use this correctly. I usually get an error message. So if you're getting an error message, go up to CPU. Automatic sometimes causes this error message, so you're going to usually want to go to CPU. That should always work. Um, and this should probably be checked. So this is probably going to be your best render settings. This is 1080p, 60 FPS. Audio, this is your sample rate, 96,000. Your bit rate should be 384,000. So there's a scroll down option. You can just select it for that. And this is the very bottom one. So yeah, uh, projects, you're going to want best rendering quality. Uh, this should be at use project settings, and that's about it for your render settings. So again, this is 1080p. You can switch to 720 by doing this, and then you'll still have your 60 FPS. And if you want 30, you just select this. So those are only two things that you should be changing is the frame size and the frame rate. So that's basically 720p or 1080p and 30 FPS or 60 FPS. When you're dealing with gameplay, that's usually the only two types of settings you're going to have to worry about. So I have a bunch of presets here that are just allowing me to do certain things. Um, so I have like 30, 60 for 720, and 30 and 60 for 1080. And th those other ones you're seeing there are just extras that I'll use on stuff for filmmaking or anything that's not video game related. Um, so yeah, this is the Destiny clip. So let me just go through real quick and show you what I would do with the Battlefield clip. So let's go back to where I had that clip here. All right. And now that this clip is 1080, 60 FPS, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to my preset I already have made. 
which has got the 1080p 60 fps already set up as a preset with all the great settings that i want i'm going to click apply and okay my project settings have changed and now this clip is going to be at 1080p if i go to render it the equal sign is now changed to 1080p 60 fps this is my preset this is what i'm going to do when i'm rendering so now i'm going to click render and then i'll be done and yeah this is where you can name your file where you save it to can be done up here so yeah that's pretty much all i have to show you with this render settings tutorial i have an updated tutorial on my montage editing uh, i made one a long time ago and that video was very successful uh, i got a lot of views a lot of good res responses on it people were asking me to do an updated version on it and so this time i'm going to be calling it advanced montage editing so look out for that video it'll be coming out soon and yeah i hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to leave a comment rate and subscribe and thanks for watching